Please listen to what I have to say thoroughly without prejudice before jumping to conclusions. My purpose is to find a logical and respectable middle ground that would allow religions and politics in democratic nations to coexist without turning upon themselves and destroying the core that holds their nation together. Welcome to Four Seas One Family. I would like to point out that it isn't my purpose to tell anyone what they should or shouldn't believe or how to live one's life. I acknowledge that religion has a significant and positive role in many people's lives. There are definitely parts of spiritual beliefs that present solid and positive moral examples of how to live one's life, and to say that this isn't true would be very disingenuous. Nor are my comments meant to promote anti-religious sentiment, because it's easy to see how many New Age social constructs have been detrimental to a nation's social, political, and even financial empowerment. However, the truth is aspects of religion can be used to shape and control policies that may later become a disadvantage and interfere with a nation's overall development and even competitiveness. Religion has taken on a very different role as scientific advancements lifted the veil of mystery to explain events taking place in the natural world. For example, in many cases, we now know why and how we become ill and what steps we can take to improve our lives by placing responsibility upon ourselves instead of some outside mystical force. Now, I'm not on a mission to chastise religion or exonerate non-believers because no one is infallible and will ever be. I hope that members of religious and non-religious communities don't forget why an overwhelmingly vast majority of them would rather live or practice their religion in democratic nations. Now, people worldwide have decided to look elsewhere to live out their lives and practice their religion in peace without fear, rather than being punished for their faith. And this is one reason why democratic nations appear welcoming to them. Over time, democratic governments have incorporated traditions that value tolerance and free expression. And once again, over time, religion in these nations have built up and maintained a firm hold on regional and national opinions and politics. And today it is apparent that faith-based organizations are essential allies that can be influenced by people in business and politics to rally support and gain popularity as well as to implement financial and political, primarily conservative reforms. And regardless of your beliefs, it should be easy to acknowledge that fundamental and universal principles of morality are what guarantees mutual respect. However, if you don't understand how religion and religious dogma can become intertwined and influence politics and government policies in ways that unsightly enforce control over people's lives, I will offer some examples. The truth is, religion in democratic nations like America has an awkward and embarrassing history to tell. The best way to investigate this is through the available data collected over time. Information is usually confirmed or contradicted by repeatable experiments and readily accessible data that can be used to base measurable statistics. When information is presented this way, reasonable conclusions can be made that bypass personal preferences and prejudices. Statistics will show that a clear separation between religion and secularization in world economies has been taking place. And in today's technological and ever so competitive environment, the correlation between prosperity and religion has never reached a conclusion all parties affected at least can agree upon. In this situation, I feel only unbiased public and measurable statistics should be used to make points or comparison. Perhaps one day, I can go into detail of why this is so. Still, for now, I would like to point out that nations have become more reliant on technological advancements rather than religious ideologies and practices. In other words, advancements made because of the access to technology 
have overcome the reliance on religion as a measuring tool for personal, financial, and even national progression. And G GDP data from several nations reflect this. However, a case can be made that shows spiritual practices that cultivated virtuous actions encourage constructive group participation, which may have been diffused for igniting economic growth in the early 20th century. A point should be raised that technological advancements don't necessarily correspond positively for improvements in social or the moral responsibilities of a nation and its citizens. The upholding of respect for individual rights and ethical values must not be devalued. I believe that technological advancements and positive moral values are essential for long-term national progression. It shouldn't be hard to understand why political parties in countries like the U.S. and other subsets want to push a particular policy. And no matter how you may look at it, this is simply the slow nature of a democracy. For policy to be advocated, some people feel that it may be necessary to forget exceptions and include religious representations and reward supporters by incorporating elements that appeal to them into government practices and policies, which often, well, suppresses the voices of people outside of their group. Events like this don't only take place in nations like America, in nations like China, which have authoritarian governments, we see how the Chinese Communist Party has allowed religion to only continue in China after the party has edited the contents in Chinese language Christian Bibles, for example, or any other related material that is related to any religion. Now, they've done so by maintaining their authority over terminologies and subliminal references in religious, religious doctrines that could become a threat to their stronghold. Now, I may not necessarily like what I'm about to conclude from collected research, and before interpreting the information I present as anti-religious or government rhetoric, put any disagreements you have temporarily aside and take a moment, just a moment, to objectively analyze what could be the reasons why governments, once again, not only in authoritarian nations like China, would want to limit the influence of at least sections of religious doctrine that may affect government policies and decisions. Anytime one person, group, or government insists on promoting their beliefs or policies upon others without taking the time to consider the lifestyles others may prefer to live, there will undoubtedly be conflict. And before any policy is considered in under ideal situations, time should be invested to objectively assess the effects a policy may have on those who oppose it. And once anticipated opposition is discovered, action should be taken to explain how the mentioned policy, if implemented, could benefit the opposing party as well. And if the majority of those a policy effects still disagree, they should be respectful of the legal and democratic decisions of the majority. Those who disagree also must be shown respect, even if they can't be persuaded or if no alternative can be found or agreement made. This is when democratic majority rule comes into play. Because democratic nations are usually made up of collective cultures, getting 100% agreement on every policy that directly or indirectly affects everyone is just impossible. Several reforms faith-based communities would like to implement are perfectly logical and fair. However, there are significant parts of faith-based political platforms that are well, hard for its members to admit our blind spots. These blind spots can lead to in the enacting of laws and regulations that discriminate and enforce unfair treatment upon underrepresented and protected sections of even their own group, and in some cases, segregated populations. While visiting, working, and living in nations over the years with governments based on religious and non-religious doctrines, I've observed the types of existence they are currently under and may face in the future, and I'm not totally optimistic. 
religious and non-religious beliefs will not disappear, and science and secularization will continue to advance in democratic nations. Coexistence based on rational thought is needed. Otherwise, democratic societies will deplete the elements necessary for systematic development and long-term survival. In my next episode, I will touch briefly upon examples of nations that have a record of forcefully using governmental and institutional controls to remotely control the influence religion has on national policy and development, as well as answering the question, does religion really handicap a democracy? If you have found what we have to offer of any value, Please click on the subscribe and bell buttons below to keep up to date with our current episodes. And if you're listening to our podcast, please subscribe and help us spread the word that we have a lot more in common than we think. We're very interested to hear what you have to say. For Four Seas One Family, I'm James Thomas in Taipei, Taiwan. And remember to stay strong, safe, and healthy wherever you are in the world.